well we're still under lockdown unfortunately we're going to be checking over some old footage and continuing our journey today from uh, the Sovereign Harbour all the way to the historic Dungeness in Kent and having a little look at places like Hastings Pier on the way I've wanted to take a look at Langley Point for a while now and historically it's been a hugely productive mark and I'm glad I got to fish it this week and glean a lot of information from some of the locals. It sits to the east of Eastbourne and just to the west of Sovereign Harbour. Uh, if you're coming by car head for the Sovereign Roundabout, that's the big one by the Leisure Centre and then take the exit for Prince William Parade. And here you'll find a couple of car parks that lead directly down to the mark, so you won't be uh, walking far. Good catches can be made uh, along here between any of these groins. A uh, case of finding a little space can get very busy. And you can actually see Eastbourne in the distance there. The... A little bit further on towards a point you've got Harbour Reach car park. And then here is another car park right at the end by those double roundabouts. However, I wouldn't go out on the breakwater there. Uh, it's quite slippery, a bit dodgy, particularly in bigger tides. Uh, but there should be plenty of space on the beaches and you can still get really good access there to um, the deeper water. So what we're looking at here is the Sovereign Harbour. So if you have uh, downloaded Google Earth Pro since the last episode, good feature we've got here, I'll just show you. Uh, you can change the date using the date icon, you can see it just on the left hand corner. And what that does, that will give you the beach at various states of the tide. So it's really good for finding uh, little gullies, marks, rocks and stuff like that. Another alternative is head to the Western Harbour Arm. Uh, you can get definitely get onto the deep water from there. The only problem you're going to have there is with the boat traffic coming in and out of the harbour. So you're sort of taking your pick really. And we'll come on to the fish you might catch and I'll have a little go in a minute. And you can see where you might want to fish along here. Now another option is actually to fish inside the harbour. It's not really the done thing, uh, although you are away from the boats here. And some of those little muddy gullies there look uh, really good holding spots for flounder for example. So you can see the advantage of fishing the harbour, um, you've obviously got the deep water that's in range and then you can fish either side. And what we're looking at here is a February day so you can imagine what it's like in, in summer. Uh, a couple of the anglers I spoke to forewarned me about this. So definitely consider the dawn or dusk fishing or even do a bit of night fishing. Although the tide will push hard at times, you can still get away with two or three ounces uh, in calmer, smaller tides. Uh, I actually used a little bass flatty rod here, three ounce rod. But UK fishing being as it is, <laughs> you probably need a beach caster and 12 pound line, tapered leaders as well. Uh, as far as the rigs go, um, a lot of people suggesting clipped uh, loop rigs, the Portsmouth rig. Uh, you can still use your normal three hook flappers but particularly for the place you want to get that long flowing rig out there as well. And you can always take a look at our rig time guides, there are plenty on this channel. Distance casting is a good advantage here, uh, it can put you in amongst the fish in the deeper water. Uh, the place particularly, they do like that clear water as well the place. And there you go, I did manage a couple of small little place while I was here, certainly uh, didn't which was quite nice, I didn't blank. Lots of other species throughout the year as well. In spring you've got your place. Dogfish can be caught here as well. Uh, codling, maybe. <laughs> During the summer there's place, dogfish, mackerel, bass, uh, mullet and smooth hound. Mackerel fishing can get a bit ridiculous to be honest. Uh, autumn, whiting, those Dover sole. So in winter, whiting, dab and even codling becoming a bit more of a rarity now. Uh, the bass here are apparently best tackled over a big spring tide. Um, 
like a lot of places along this stretch of coast um, maybe try and fish the last couple of hours of the flood and then into about an hour of the ebb give yourself the best chance with a big juicy peeler crab so your number one bait probably be uh, a lug uh, probably a good mark for flounder but i did hear of someone catching a stingray here so i thought i'd mention that as a, a mark never fished it myself but certainly one to check out so moving east a little bit higher up here and uh, it's actually i don't want to try and profess to be the big expert here <laughs> uh, but this part of norman's bay although it's a really good uh, spot for lots of fishing we have some good reports coming in from here varied fishing uh, you uh, i don't know too much about it <laughs> so our next stop And the next mark of note will be Pevensey Bay. Can fish all the way down here. I know it is popular between uh, the Sovereign Harbour and Pevensey Bay. Um, so I'm sort of just quickly rushing over that because I haven't fished that part. But uh, So the next port of call is going to be uh, Pevensey Bay by the car park here. Something we've covered a few times in the channel. Um, but you can fish all along this stretch of beach, it's a case of finding your own spot again. I just think it's going to be quite interesting once this uh, Covid's finished for uh, all of us trying to find our own little spots. I don't know whether sea fishing will become hugely popular, but I know everyone's busting to get out, so anyone that does fish will be heading to the coast on those first few weeks, I should think. Um, one of the first uh, places to check in really would be Angler's Den um, for information and of course lugworm, ragworm baits as well and, and we stopped off at Pevensey Bay and speak to a couple of locals this was in autumn. Well I'm here with Robert and Dean on Pevensey Beach um, I've just met these guys they just pulled a whiting out there and I'm assuming you're using lugworm uh, lug and rag. Lug and rag, which is quite quite a rarity on this stretch of coast using rag, isn't it? No, not really. No, not really. it's further on the west coast, they're always using lug, but this yeah. end uses a lot of rag. Right, so oh, that's a good one. You get quite a lot of flat fish from down this end. Yeah. And, uh, but this time of year, they're just starting to pick up again. Right. So just coming in and the pout widening up being a pain in the backside, but yeah, uh, brilliant. patching all the bait. So, what have you had today then, other than Most, that whiting? It's, I, it's, I just it's mostly saw. channel whiting today. Yeah, and we're still waiting for the odd flatfish to come through. Right. Okay. And what sort of flatties are you, uh, are you thinking about? Only at the moment, it's mainly dabs. Right. Quite small ones. Yeah, so it's had the babies from last season coming through. And then onwards from Pevensey, going to be heading towards Bex Hill now, and all of this journey is obviously west to east. And there are a couple of, uh, this is known as Norman's Bay area here, so you're off the main coastal road. So again, although there's lots of private houses, there are uh, a few access points, uh, the caravan park for one, uh, where you can park up and fish this beach. <coughs> and although you can suffer a bit from all the keep out private signs, uh, parking near the caravan park's good. Uh, so one to explore there. Alice's Pipes, uh, quite a well-known mark here as well. Um, fishing the end of that uh, you can fish the um, water outlet they call it a sewage outlet uh, I think it's more of drainage actually from the flat land behind Norman's Bay um, seems to be quite popular and you'll always have a lot of space for yourself again this is going back to trying to find somewhere to fish when uh, lockdown finishes uh, this wouldn't be a bad spot actually uh, flounder here can be quite good the place if the water's clear it's mostly shingle here, but there are those rocky reefs. A lot of anglers do fish those reefs just at the top of the tide there. Seems, seems to be favoured a lot more, this, uh, over the high tide. And then we're just going to head down further east to our next mark. See, we're coming into Bex Hill now. 
a little bit more populated along the seafront where the fish might funnel in and out because of those reefs another winter venue we've taken a look at on the channel I'm actually fishing up near the fishing club uh, which is to the eastern side of Bexhill just to get within casting distance of some of those rocky reefs there why that would offer a little bit of variety still lugworm for most of this coast is going to be your go-to bait here no need to complicate things really casting distance can be good but you'll still get fish close in again that sort of mixed ground this is uh, bulverhithe now for us anglers this is Bridge Way, this is the approach to the mark. Now you go over this bridge here, the railway bridge. I don't walk that fast really. So this is your looking back at the way we've just come up on the bridge for your parking. And then when you get up at the top of the bridge, you've got the train track obviously, but you can look down on the mark and you can see here that's a lot better than the way we've come. Possibly want to travel light maybe along the coastal path by bike. So as you can see, you've got flat sand there, you've got a bit of uh, surf running as well. It's always going to produce, produce a surf in parts. You've got rocky reefs, boulders and man-made boulders as well. Just quickly taking a look at the nearest angling shops. You've got Hastings Angling Centre, that's down in the Bourne, back in Hastings, uh, TN34 3AY. Personally, I've never done very well here, but I've heard good reports of it. to Hastings now through St Leonard's similar sort of mixture of shingle and reefs as well all the way up to Hastings Pier which we'll take a look at in the next episode where we're going to go from Hastings to Dungeness <laughs>